thank you. Um, before I start with that talk, uh, I have a question for you. So who's um, actually using Composer? And who's using Flow or Neos? Oh, that doesn't match completely, but f anyway, uh, so there is Jordi, sorry to point at you, uh, the guy who created Composer, and he will give a talk tomorrow at 10. At 10? Right. So consider that tonight when you're drinking, because there are lots of reasons to join Jordi's talk tomorrow. Um, <laughs> it actually will be funny. You don't have to and sad and... Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, you still can be drunk, maybe it even helps. Um, <laughs> right, so welcome to this session, um, this very practical, hands-on, experimental uh, session about event sourcing and um, command query request segregation. Uh, I think it was perfect that Bastian kind of uh, laid the ground for it. Um, lots of motivation has been shown there. Who has been using or got in touch uh, more practically with uh, CQRS already? That's wow. And event sourcing? Actually used event sourcing in a project? Okay, good. Uh, and I, the good thing is, or the bad thing is, I know all these people who raised their hand by, by name, so... <laughs> right. Um, so what I'm going to try... Um, oh, actually, yeah, I didn't introduce myself earlier, but what I'm actually going to try is uh, to, to show you the very basics about event sourcing and CQRS, just to get you the idea. And then I'll actually try to do some live coding. <laughs> um, I also have a working example, so if that doesn't work out. And <laughs> if possible, I'd really like you to ask questions. So, um, and if technically possible, even in between, maybe we don't need the microphone, I can just repeat your question. Um, but I really would love that, that you get these individual steps necessary. And if you have any questions about it, then ask them right away, okay? So, Bastian said, don't even get me started about CRUD. <laughs> um, well, CRUD is, um, as you know, a, um, a concept for managing data, right? We, it's, it's a very useful thing if you need to put in some data into a database and get it out again. So this is also something from a, dom a domain, but that domain is called data, basically. Um, but it's very easy, easy to use. Uh, however, the problem with uh, CRUD is that once your domain gets more complicated and you start um, creating different kinds of representations, um, then well, you lose a track and everything will be more complex. So just an example. You'll have some conceptual model in your application. So ideally, with Flow, it would be domain model, like Bastian showed, right? In that application, you've seen uh, we have conference, speaker, and all that. That is the conceptual model of your application. And when you do the basic things, you still can work with CRUD because you can create a conference or update a speaker, things like that, or delete something. Um, but it's rather seldom that, especially in a domain like conferences, for example, that you have only these simple operations. And um, also you need different kinds of uh, representations. For example, you need a list of speakers, uh, which have uh, submitted their papers. You also need a list of spe speakers uh, categorized by talk sessions. And so you start up creating, putting every information into these models and also end up with all kinds of interesting queries um, you run. And as you can imagine, that complexi uh, complexity grows there. So, but then, 
then again, don't, yeah, don't get us started. This is about CRUD. There are so many more reasons to, to not uh, do CRUD in, in meaningful applications anymore. Also because it's not very expressive. <clears throat> so just to get the, the words out, um, CKRS means that um, you split up that conceptual model, for example, your domain model, into two models, and that's one for writing or updating and one for reading. So instead of having one conference model, you basically have two different models. One is for updating and one is for reading again. But these are not just called models there. They are um, the, the actual write model or update model is called a command. So CQRS basically means that you split up these two um, parts for read and for write, or otherwise, other way around. Event sourcing means that instead of storing the state in a database, for example, you store all changes to the system. So um, an example for, from, from Bastian's domain would be um, a speaker has updated his uh, title of, of, of the talk he submitted. So what you would do is um, you find the speaker and then get his paper object and then just change the title and run an update query. Usually you would do that. <coughs> but with event sourcing, you would not just store the new state, but store that change. So that event which happened, um, speaker updated the title of his talk, something like that. And the benefit of that is, I mean, there are lots of benefits, but the benefit is, of course, that you don't lose information on the way. Um, if you just set the new state, you lose uh, information about the old state, right? Okay, so this is a diagram from Matthias, um, which uh, I stole for that purpose, but it illustrates um, the, basically the flow which uh, you take in order to um, deal with objects and persist them and eventually and, and get them back again. So um, up here, so uh, client, that is, that is your browser, right? or your command line, or your s API, your service, that is kind of your entry point. And um, instead of just um, handling everything in one operation, you say, like, um, update uh, the paper talk title. Paper talk title? No, talk paper title. That would be a command. So um, you, that is the right model, which results in events, and then if you want to know um, the current title of a paper, um, you retrieve that again in some way and end up with a read model. And that read model is usually, it's also called a data transfer object. You're probably familiar with that. So it's just a um, stupid PHP class, um, which is usually immutable. You implemented so it's immutable, so you just um, put the values in and ca can get them out, so you basically want to use something like a value object maybe for that, or some, some other representation. Um, but you cannot set any data there, so you only will have getters, basically. You only have possibilities to retrieve the information. But the nice thing is that you'll have multiple read models, or you can have multiple read models um, for the same, based on the same events, depending on what you currently need. So if you need a list for the uh, time slots, uh, you might need something different than for a list of people who you already notified uh, about schedule changes or something like that. <coughs> So, lots of uh, different ways to, why, why you might want to use uh, event sourcing. One is, um, you can imagine that in general, not only with event sourcing, but with events, um, 
your code becomes much more expressive. Uh, instead of just saying update speaker, um, and you say like um, speaker changed his last name, <laughs> that makes a difference. You can, I mean, already by reading it, you see that it also probably has different implications. Then when you try something remotely like what Bastian also said, um, when you try to uh, decouple parts of your application or have a distributed approach, microservice approach, for example, um, then working with events and commands might be even, yeah, that's not the only way, but really the way you want to try. Um, audit log is one of the typical things someone would mention because, I mean, when you write down all events which happened in your application and everything which you can change in your system actually ends in some event, you have a perfect event log, uh, audit log. So basically, you could um, reconstitute or we, you could actually follow all the steps back, what happened, who did what, and so on. But um, if you want that for legal reasons, um, that can be difficult because sometimes you say, yeah, event sourcing is the perfect uh, mechanism for having an audit log for legal reasons. Well, I think in court, uh, the barrier to, to get that is, is so high because you actually need to be able to reconstitute the whole system only from these uh, events in your audit log. And there will usually be some parts which are probably not event sourced. Debugging is also a nice advantage which kind of comes as a gift because if your system only depends or is based on the result of all these events, you can also go back in time and see um, how did the system look like yesterday. Also, like with an asterisk, uh, depending on the complexity of your system, of course, if, it, if it's possible. But um, as I've heard, at least in, in the React department <laughs> of NEOS, um, there you can uh, reconstitute a state, <laughs> right? Um, and and make uh, it take advantage of event events there in order to just say, okay, theoretically, if I just store that state somewhere, I could um, I could uh, see how my uh, user interface looked like at a certain point in time. And then, um, since we cannot predict future, the future. Um, Sometimes you want to draw conclusions from all the data you have. Um, so imagine you have you run a shop, a bookshop or something, and um, so you have um, events for some putting a book in the shopping basket and uh, or proceeding to checkout and and so on. And now uh, after a while, um, someone wants to know: okay, always um, books of that kind of category. Um, are they actually end up? Do they actually end up in the shopping basket and then are ultimately removed again before someone buys something? So it's like, what about these books which end up in the shopping cart but are never paid or never bought? And what you usually would do then is implement some kind of tracking. You maybe add some tracking code here and there in order to track the behavior of people using a shopping shopping cart. And then from that point in time, you have all the data you can use, and like a couple of weeks later, you can uh, have your first analysis. But the nice thing about event sourcing is that you have all the events from the past already, so you can create new projections, new analysis based on these events, even though you didn't know that you will need them later. So if I just take all the someone put something in the shopping basket, someone put it out again events, then I can compute, of course, um, what kind of uh, books were never bought, but someone was at least curious, right? So, yeah, there's, I mean, I, I can't go so much in detail, but I'll show you in practice how that works with flow. So, but 
If you do event sourcing, that means um, you don't store the state in a database or something like we currently do with Doctrine. We just uh, try modeling that, uh, that object into tables um, and just store it. So what we do with event sourcing is we take all events and replay them and then the end result is uh, your object. So for example, if you want to know how many items are in my shopping basket at the moment, um, you basically replay all the events which happened with that shopping basket, uh, like someone put that in, took it out again, uh, increased the amount of that, and so on. And then when you replay it, all these events, you know the current state. And that means we need to get the events from somewhere and they are stored in some kind of event store. But storing events is really easy because you, you know that um, when new events are coming in, they won't change because it already happened in the, and you cannot change the past, so they will just append it to the existing events. So basically what you need is a table um, and each row is one event and when new events are coming in, you put them in. And it will never change, because you cannot change the past. And so, for example, we currently use uh, just a database table, or we could switch that to a different storage. There's, um, there are also dedicated event stores for that. All right, so um, just some details about commands and events before we go and get to the code. So a command means do that. So it's imperative. It says um, put that book into the shopping basket or um, assign that talk to that schedule slot. It always... It, um, I mean, and, and the wording is extremely important with commands and events. You will spend much more time uh, with that than actual coding, and that's one of the weird things. So, and then when you have a command, you pass it to some code which can handle that command, a command handler, and that will either accept that command or reject it. So it will check uh, if it's valid, for example, is... Uh, um, so, for example, is, is it really a number where a number is requested? Um, is the name too long? Does it contain certain special characters or whatnot? That is usually checked in the command, and the command handler will then ultimately take the decision if uh, it wants to accept that command. And events um, are about I mean, with this, we mean domain events, so that is something which is interesting to your domain, to your business. Um, versus events which are interesting to your infrastructure. So there might be events as well. So I, I don't mean like in JavaScript, when you click a button, then there's a button click event. That is not the events we're talking about. We don't want to record that. Um, we want to record domain events which are interesting to your business or to the domain of your application. And event, as I said, events are something which happened in the past, which means that the name of the event also needs to be in the past. Right? So it's always something like, speaker has cancelled his talk or his talk, yeah, will I have different events for female and my male? Probably not. Um, or someone put a book into the... Uh, has put. <laughs> it's difficult. And you'll see that we'll have some more options about it, but um, the wording is important, and it's important that you get used to that you cannot change events. And that's really hard not to crack, because... Um, what if you made something wrong, did something wrong? Like, or if 
a user using your application changes mind and you basically want to undo something. Uh, can you just remove events again? You can't because you cannot change the past. What you can do though is coming up with new events. Um, so for example, um, instead of deleting an order, you want to cancel that order. Okay, so we um, talked about, uh, or Basti shortly mentioned this uh, framework here. Um, that is a package for Flow which um, supports event sourcing. Um, it's important to mention that event sourcing secures are of course nothing which only can be done by a framework. So um, for big projects and like, I don't know, your, uh, your company depends on a single shop you created yourself, then you probably even won't use a framework, right? Um, but if you're using Flow or Neos, then this package is for you to help you getting into the right direction and takes a lot of small steps from you uh, which you don't want to deal with. Okay, so I mentioned um, something here um, because it might be interesting so um, Bastian and uh, Dominique and me mostly, with the help of a couple of others from, from the community, have invested a lot of time into uh, that event sourcing package. And basically what we did was uh, we put together event sourcing solutions we created ourselves onto one table and then created a new one out of it. And one application, um, I've been using it with uh, since basically summer last year, spring last year. Um, it's, it's a new thing uh, Flanave will do, and I, I hope I can mention that here today. So um, we plan to uh, run a platform as a service for Neos, so, uh, which could be interesting for you if you wonder how to get Neos into the cloud. Um, or how to uh, establish a deployment pipeline, or how to get your Neos projects uh, running. So, and that is all based on that event sourcing package, um, and it runs quite well. So, if you're interested in that, then you can just ask someone from us Flow Native guys. We can also show you some parts of that application if you're interested, like the event sourcing part. And there are only very few things missing to, to make it really nice. So it's not as much documented um, yet as, as we need, but uh, it's kind of proven in, in reality. So I mentioned sample domain. Uh, we don't have like a whole afternoon to model that domain, and so this will be difficult. I said something like a bookshop. Um, and then I said, okay, originally you have something like add book, to repository or something like that, right? Create book, but uh, what is the real term for it? And I'm no domain expert for books, but you, then you end up with lots of options like, is it some assortment in that shop? I mean, or is it a catalog? Or um, The wording is really difficult, so we just go for one of these. Um, but it's important to, to really take that step and um, the weird thing about event sourcing and CQRS is that you spend more time, I feel at least, um, modeling all that and coming up with the words, and then the actual programming is just writing down what you designed. And that's weird. It's, it's like you don't produce so much code, and you wonder also where the logic is because it's so implicit, everything. <laughs> now let's try this. Yeah, so first question will be, of course, can someone see that? Like in the back rows? Okay, so if, if you can't see it, then please let me know and I'll try to improve it, but uh, that's actually not the one I wanted. There it goes, right? So I created a little um, 
base application here. And since uh, time is very limited, I won't actually recode everything now, but guide you through the different parts and can run some commands and so on to, to tell you uh, what's happening there. So where I'm currently now is the command controller. And now it gets confusing because not these kinds of commands, the other kind types of commands, right? What I mean here is the command line interface in the shell. You know command controller and flow, right? That's the command controller. Um, so we have an add book to catalog command. And what it basically does is it creates a new command object, which in this case is just called add new book to catalog. So that's here, right? Um, and so it adds title and ISBN there. And then uh, I have a add new book to catalog handler, and that handles that command. And that's end of the story. So that is what's happening there. Um, now, there's one speciality, and that is, you see, uh, the book title is not just a string, and the ISBN is not just a string. These are objects as well, and they are I mean, they are not very beautiful, but they are value objects. So they, they have a constructor and only a private property here. And actually, theoretically, here is some validation. So it means like if the title doesn't contain NEOS, it's not a valid book title. <laughs> very useful. Um, and you have a getter here, or you can cast that object to string. So the nice thing now is, um, as you know, we have property mapping in Flow. So when I call that from the comment line, then there will be a string, and that will be converted to a book title object and automatically be validated by that. I already know, OK, this is always a valid book title. I can pass it around. I don't need to validate it ever again, because it's a valid book title object. So let's follow the track here. Uh, let's go to the add new book to catalog handler class. That's also a huge class. So um, anyway, we don't have time to discuss all that. But it is one way to do that, right? So basically, what we have here is something which comes close to the domain model you know, and that is called book, right? But usually what you would do there in traditional flow, you would say something like dollar book equals new book, and then this book repository add book. Okay, familiar with that? So instead of that, what you do here is you don't call new in the first place, but there's a constructor. Um, called add to catalog. And by that, it creates uh, a new book. I mean, I don't know if that method name is meaningful in that domain yet, but just let's assume it. And the parameters for that kind of named constructor is book title and ISBN. And then there's something familiar for you here, book repository safe, but that is an event sourced repository. So which in, in the background, of course, works other, uh, differently than the um, book repository you know. Okay, so any questions about these two lines of code, basically? The, yeah, 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 exactly. That's what I wanted to do. Next, add to catalog. So let's check what kind of class is that. Um, that is your model here, your aggregate root, actually, in this case. Um, just out of convenience, it extends some abstract event source aggregate root, which will basically um, record the events and can be asked, are there any events, and things like that. So, And it can reconstitute the object. But this is the named constructor I, I mentioned. So instead of having a real constructor here, uh, I create a new instance. 
and return that instance. And in the middle, I have this record that something has happened. So that is one of the convenience method from that abstract event source aggregate route. It basically says, okay, look, here you have an event, please record that. <laughs> and that new event is called new book has been added to catalog, book title, ISBN, and a third parameter, which you can see here, but uh, it is the date when that has been added. I want to have that information. So what's, what happens when record that is called? Two things are happening. First of all, it will put the event somewhere so that it later can be stored in some event store. So it will be scheduled to be stored in the event store. Okay? And the second thing is um, it will trigger event listener methods within this entity here uh, to be called which is here. When new book has been added to catalog, yeah, and then this ISBN is set to the ISBN from the event. And now in this private variable, you have that ISBN. So the point is, do you actually need that? Usually not, but you need it for a special case. In this case, uh, we need to implement a method called getIdentifier, and that is needed for the event stream. So imagine you have some event store where all events go in, and you want to find certain types of events because you're only interested in these kinds of events. It would be stupid to, to look at all these events. So that is why we have event streams and event types. So the event type here is new book has been added to catalog, and the event stream is this particular book with that ISBN or UUID or something like that. So that allows us to only look to a, at, a, at a very limited set of events because it's only what happened with this particular book, right? Not even with all books, but only with his book. Okay, so that was, you remember that circle? That was the right part. I basically wrote that event now. Um, and then this request is done. And now I want to retrieve all that information again because, let's say, on the command line, I want to provide a list of books which are in that cat catalog. Coincidentally, I have prepared such a method, uh, which is called list stock command. Um, and what you find, uh, see here, is something called a book in catalog finder. So that is something you, you might know you from querying the, the repository without event sourcing. You know, in Flow, you can add something to a repository, and then you can call all these find methods. All these find methods are now located in specific finders. And what you try to do is not having one finder which fits all your purposes, but you start to create so-called projections which are specific to one particular use case. We'll get to that. Let's just assume that book in catalog finder will find all the books we now edit. And you see here uh, we have um, Book ISBN seems to be a public variable. Book title, edit time, we can form that, output the table, and there, we, there we're done. Okay, pretty simple code. Let's have a look at the find all method. Okay, you can imagine that looks like <laughs> the 
find methods in the uh, repository you already know. So these are basically implemented in the abstract doctrine finder. You can completely create your own finder. You're not abs absolutely not bound to doctrine or this abstract class here. But if you want to store things in a table, um, then it's very convenient to use this kind of finder. And it returns an array of classes uh, of objects of the type book in catalog. Okay, probably at this point I need to uh, uh, um, explain projections. So we, we went through all the right side. Now we, need, we, we want to read stuff again. And we have all these events with books. And now we have a specific use case. So for example, we want to show all the books which are currently in stock. A different use case could be show me um, books sorted by category. And for each category, I need the top five most sold books. Okay? So I can create projections. A projection is basically something, something listening to events and every, every time something which is interesting for that uh, specific case, it writes down uh, the representation it needs. So for example, every time a book is added to the catalog, the book in catalog projection will write down that new book somewhere in a table or in an Excel file or somewhere where you like. And the format, how that is written, can be and should be completely optimized to your use case. So for example, imagine in NEOS you have the node tree, the page tree, the document tree, whatever you call it. We could create a projection which writes down all the documents in the tree for your specific workspace, for a specific user, as a JSON file to disk. And then my laptop died. Can you, can you see what that means? So instead of having one table in, in the database which contains all nodes and then I create a big query which extracts the documents for that specific user and workspace, I just write that specific information somewhere as a JSON file because that is the best representation I can get for the user interface, I only need to load it. I don't need to compute anything. Um, it might be completely unrealistic that we do such a projection. That was just an example, but it can be so specific, right? So we have a book and catalog projection, but we could also have a projection um, which uh, does something much more fancy like top sold books and, and so on. So we saw the finder, we saw the book. Um, oh no, we didn't see the book in catalog model yet. That, that is the data transfer object. Um, it's basically a final class with public properties, just to make it very easy to work with it. Um, and then we have some, some kind of, not magic really, annotations there which um, tells Flow to create a table for it in the database because this is a database-based projection. It could be, as I said, a file-based projection or whatever you like. And what's missing now is the, um, the projector which creates all that. This is the projector. So a projector is basically an event listener. Or actually, these methods here are event listeners. When new book has been added to catalog, and then I get an event there, I create a new book in catalog read model, the one you've just seen, and just add the properties to that read model and add it to the projection and then it's stored in a database table. And then the finder can query that database table, find that, and so I get my read model back again. So 
we took that round trip, and I can see that in your faces that either um, you need a coffee or it's really difficult. <laughs> um, but when you went that circle once, then now you have that read model. And what when I, when I want to change something about that book, I, I mean, I, it's a read model. I cannot change it. So what I do is I basically take the identifier and then create new events based on that identifier again, which go all that route. So in the end now, just to see it a bit more practical, Um, so I have these commands here, book add to catalog, book add book to catalog, let's make it a bit bigger, so it asked me for, uh, it asked me for a title, so let's say Joomla is great, oh exception. <laughs> The book title does not contain NEOS. Okay, let's try again. NEOS is also just a CMS. And the ISBN, I don't have validation for that yet. So, and now my message politely said, book NEOS is also just a CMS, it will be added to the catalog because it hasn't been added yet. I don't know, the command has been accepted. I don't know when that will be processed, right? Um, this here is a white screen with tiny font. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. Let's see. Actually, that is my event store. And this is the event which has been added there. Okay? It's called, um, here's the event stream, that, so that consists of a class name or a stream name and the identifier and the event type and the payload, actually. And now, finally, um, you need to see the projection. Projection. Um, there. Bim, 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 bim. Down there. So this is also just a white screen with tiny font. Um, can I make it bigger that way? Like that? No, I can only highlight it. It's, now it's lighter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that is basically just a table with ISBN book title added to t date time. And um, now the finder can just read it from there. So if I say, what was it, list stock, uh, book list stock, I can read that. There's of course so much more to tell and we only scratch the surface and so on and I'm glad that Matthias isn't here <laughs> to see all, my, all the faults. Um, Deleting a book, you can never delete a book, you can remove it from the catalog. Don't try to delete something with event sourcing, right? What about assets, binary data? You don't store that in events, you refer to it, right? Because you don't want to put the images into your event stream. What about security, accounts and all that? What about versioning events? If I changed my mind and I, it's already running in production, there's a nice book in progress by Greg Young about it or ask me later on, should you try it? Yes, but beware, take care of your brain, it's really mind-boggling. Um, it's, it's so absurd to program that way, but I think it's really worth it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, that was uh, pretty precise from Robert. Are there any questions oh. for Robert? I, I mean, can't imagine any. Two minutes. <laughs> this is pretty good for you, so... Um. Yeah. Oh, that's unfair. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have in Germany a data, data privacy law that says if a customer wants you to delete all this data, you need to delete the data. As the data is immutable, you cannot delete it. What do you do? 
Yeah. So what what is about uh, data you probably need to delete at some point for privacy reasons or legal reasons? It's in the event stream. You can never change it, right? So what you can do is, for example, you can patch the events and uh, not remove the events, uh, but anonymize them. So you change the payload. Instead of having the real name in there, you have some fake names or things like that. And theoretically, you can also um, <laughs> e remove events. That is technically possible, but the problem with that is usually that you don't oversee which implication it, it has uh, f on all your applications. So I think the most realistic part would be to... Uh, no, no, actually, event sourcing is used on that, right? Um, and also concepts like eventual consistency is, is even for... Uh, for for uh, gate uh, ATMs is actually when you withdraw money there, it is not checking your bank account right now. Why should it? It's, that would be uh, much too expensive. It's like eventual consistent. Ten, ten minutes ago, you seem to have that money, and if not, uh, then they have your address, right? <laughs> So that's even one more question. Yeah, um, an understanding about the read models. What, what you did in the end of the event, uh, you actually wrote with a projector a specific projection for a read event that could happen. So I understand that, that you have to write uh, every read object possible in the application that might uh, have, an influ have been influenced by the write event, correct? So you would have the listing event, maybe some for a single view, uh, projection, maybe a projection for the basket, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, first of all, is this correct? You have to write. You, you every projection take the possible. decision to optimize that. So if, okay. if if you feel comfortable with reusing certain projections, fine. But, but, yes, but I understand you do not really run play through the events to get to the to the final correct state of the of the domain object before you uh, before you read it, because you already have a, re a read projection written somewhere in the persistence layer. Exactly. So the read model is only update, or the projection is updated whenever new events come in, yeah. and um, events are completely replayed either when you build up the projection from scratch again. So, for example, I delete the database, or when in the aggregate route, uh, when certain operations are done there on the right side, uh, which uh, require um, hard constraints, checks, and so on. Then we also need to. This is where my, where my question is going, because if I, do, if I make mistakes in those projections, I can have inconsistent <coughs> data in my application. No, it's, that's really cool. So if you make any problems, I, I mean, I, you can't really see it probably, but I, I just I can, I can remove this, right? Um, now, whoa, my application is completely broken. Oh, I need to change the name of the field. I need to add three more and so on. Yeah. What I basically need to do is um, just fix the projection, read model, and so on, and then, oops, and then say reflection, uh, projection replay all, and then the it's replayed and everything is there again. Okay, my, my question was, do you have this replay method yeah, that you have? Yeah, we do. <laughs> okay. We do. <laughs> so. Um, Two more ideas, if there are more questions, but uh, on the other hand, we have the break. And you're hungry, I know, and it's just maybe a few seconds. Um, first idea is, of course, you could ask him in the lunch break. I mean, he no. does not need any food. No. Um, <laughs> this is the first idea. And the second one is you can also try to convince him to just make a lightning talk about your question, because uh, you can see over there, Good transition there are three <laughs> spots left. So we decided to, um, to change it a little bit. Uh, the time for placing your lightning talk ideas is now until the, coffee, the next coffee break begins. And with the beginning of the next coffee break, then the, I hope more than seven suggestions will be voted. Thank you very much, Robert, and um, enjoy your meal. Good night.